One of the traditional things you do on the way home from a juggling convention is play High Low Gold Crush Bane Surprise! And that is where whoever you're traveling with from the convention back home or wherever you're going, you, you know, you share your highlight of the convention, the low point of your convention, uh, the goal of your convention, all that kind of stuff. And uh, last year we did that on the way home coming back from Poland and me and Juliana and our passengers, we shared all our High Low Gold Crush Bane Surprises. Uh, this time I was traveling home, I got the plane and then on the train I was traveling with Malta but we were in the quiet, quiet coach of the train so I didn't make a video but we did share our high low gold crush brain and supplies so I made some notes as we did it and uh, and here they are this will be the final video and my mini review of the EJC this year in the Azores my high was uh, probably the Diablo battle the final rounds of the Diablo battle and um, I would have been happy for any of the last three remaining to be winning um, Henry was great with his solo single Diablo weird tricks and things um, there was Alexis uh, and he was fantastic again uh, but he was beaten in his semi-final by Penn and then in the final it came down to Henry and Penn and in the final show, showdown Penn had to get five Diablos and he put all his he bet everything on five Diablos and he got it and apparently this was the first time five Diablos has ever been performed successfully on stage as part of a show or in a competition so a little bit of history there the crowd went wild and it was an amazing high point of the convention um, my uh, low point of the convention um, was probably something that happened um, a few hours after that. After a really good steak dinner, we went to see um, the uh, Escape Velocity show with Eric and Jay and some musicians. And I think that was a low point for me because it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't special enough to be a special show. It didn't seem very special for the people taking part on stage. It was just a mess. It wasn't very well put together. And uh, and also there seemed to be a, a massive disregard for the audience from Jay Gilligan in particular on the stage. Like, it started 15 minutes late, it went long, and then, you know, at the end it was like, oh, that's it, bows, people standing up, kind of a standing ovation, but I think a lot of people were just wanting to leave. Um, and then uh, and then he was like, no, turn all the lights in the gym off again. What we're going to do is we're going to do another bit. Now, in his lecture, he had talked about this, his dream of being able to have all of the different sized rings in all the different colors to do, like and for every trick to find exactly the right thing, you know, the right combination of size of rings and color of rings and all of that kind of stuff for each trick. But I thought that was something he was going to do in private and not just recreate on stage. Didn't seem to make any decisions like, oh, this is the best five um, multiplex tricks with these size rings or colors he just went through like 45 different tricks and Eric wasn't involved now in the whole show there was about 10 15 minutes of really interesting stuff some great moments but the whole thing was just baggy and messy the music was droning and annoying and the lighting was bad because Jay Gilligan was controlling the lighting from on stage which, but he was also having to juggle so there wasn't a lot of lighting variety it was either blank white on stage or lights shining in our eyes which wasn't very good and the interesting stuff that Eric did he did exactly the same in the gala show the next night. He had a 15 minute slot in the gala show and all the interesting stuff that he'd done in Jay's show was in there. So anyway, just as a special show, not good enough and a real low point. And I looked around at the end and lots of people were just sitting there like this. And everyone's just looking at each other going, wow, was that? Just not special enough. Anyway, my goal of the convention, I had a few different goals. One was to run a good fight night without Juliana and it was a good event, a successfully run event. It did take about four or five different people to replace all the things that Juliana normally helps with at a fight night, but we got through it. Um, and also, I won the fight night. Yay! Someone actually asked me, I mentioned this before, that uh, once I win an EJC fight night, I would retire from competitive fight night and, uh, and then just organize it. But I don't think this really counts, because even though I won and I beat everyone there, um, I didn't like take the title or nobody took the title away from Jochen who's the reigning champion so I think I'll, I'm gonna stick with Fight Night until I win an EJC Fight Night that Jochen has also entered. Even if I don't beat him I have to beat the person who beat Jochen or whatever to uh, take the title away from Jochen and deserve it really. Um, I had another um, goal which was to run a workshop and I did and that was squeeze catches and that was good fun and also to make some videos. Um, I didn't know that I was going to vlog every day or do daily videos from the convention, but there was Wi-Fi in the gym, in the main hall there, and which meant every morning I could spend a few hours just sort of like sorting through the footage, editing it, um, uploading it, and archiving the footage, about two hours every morning, uh, and so before lunchtime I could have that up and running and then enjoy the rest of the day. So uh, thanks for watching all the vlogs and keeping up with this. Um, what's my crush? Oh, Emil Dahl, his ring routine, absolutely fantastic. Um, 
the band on Friday night, I don't remember the name of the band, but they had a, 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 a drummer and a bass player and a keyboard player and he just did lead synth and that was really good fun. And uh, also the, the food on site, could, could I have the crush be the food on site? The pizza was really good, the steak dinner was really good, the ice cream, having an ice cream stall right in the middle of a, uh, of a, of a convention is really great. Uh, my bane. Well, I hurt my finger doing a back cross early on um, it, with a coin in coin juggling. I mentioned it on the blog, uh, on the blog a few times. I just hurt myself by, you know, hitting my finger against my own butt cheek trying to do a, a back cross with a, with a coin. So that was kind of annoying and passing. It was a bit painful. Um, and also burning my feet, just constantly having uncomfortable feet for the rest of the convention from Tuesday onwards was a, was a bit of an annoyance. And the my surprise of the convention. Uh, first of all, the weather was a lot drier, a lot nicer weather than I was expecting. I've been to the Azores many times because I work on cruise ships and go there. This is the best weather I've ever had in the Azores, but I guess it was in the middle of a Europe-wide heat wave, although not really Europe. Um, my other surprise was how cool it was to have the seats in the main hall because that meant the main hall was just a cool hangout area and the chill out zone was another cool hangout area. It was a very hanging out with people kind of special convention. Unlike some conventions where they don't have seating in the main hall and no mats to sit on, um, which makes it all a lot less fun. And uh, yeah, one extra thing about the convention, uh, or my wrapping up, my conclusion of this really, really good EJC, a lot of fun, weather was great, the people were great, however, it was a bit too exclusive based on how far away it was, how difficult it was to travel there, and how expensive it was to travel there. Um, and one of, and this is just by, you know, the way that it was voted in, I don't, I don't really agree with, and people are like, oh, it'd be great to go to the Azores. It's like, yeah, you can afford to go to the Azores, I can afford to go to the Azores, but you, Leanne, it was a bit tricky. We were like, well, we're going to save like travel money and expenses and things like that for later on in the year for other trips. So she didn't come with me. About 50% of the people who make the convention special for me just couldn't get there because there's just no way to travel except to fly, which means all the families, no families there. Like a very few families were there, like Bob uh, and the Cafe Cabaret, not there at all. Only like two traders went over there. Henry's was over there, but Davida from Play and all the people who normally go, all the people from Berlin with families and stuff couldn't go there. And just everyone who just didn't have a thousand euros to spare to go to the Azores, because um, in total, that's probably what it's going to cost in the end, about a thousand euros for all the travel and the, the tickets and everything. Last year, me and Juliana drove to the EJC, stayed in a hotel for eight nights and drove back for less money than it just cost for my flights to the Azores and back again. So. Normally, I'll put it this way, last year when vlogging, I got lots of messages from people saying, thanks for vlogging, it's like I'm there, it's almost like I'm there, I couldn't make it. But those people saying they couldn't make it weren't from, like, Germany or England or France or Italy or something because all those people could make it to the EJC really easy It was people in Australia and New Zealand and America. They were going Oh, I could wish I could be there last year Fabio said oh, I wasn't planning to come to the EJC But he watched the first two vlogs and was like there by Wednesday and there for the rest of the EJC that kind of thing Not possible so the convention was a success, but it was only a success for the people who could get there It was an artificially exclusive convention uh, which was good in some ways, because if it was bigger, the organization I don't think was good enough for this to have worked if 2,000 people were there or 3,000 people were there. It required only having about 1,200 or whatever the final numbers were. So that the organization where the schedule wasn't set, you could just announce, oh, this is the new schedule, and most people would be able to keep up with it. They'd, everyone would be able to get the message, and a lot of the things wouldn't have worked if more people were there, but they could get away with it because it was a small convention. So in the future, if you think, oh, novelty convention location, like, I don't know, I heard someone say Abu Dhabi, it's like, no, let's, let's not go to the United Arab Emirates, let's keep it like mainland Europe or near the middle of your easy to travel to in Europe, please, it would be really great not to have artificially um, small conventions just like, oh, this is for rich Germans and Belgians and stuff and, and not for everybody else who wants to go there with families or drive there um, or get there in ways which are a little bit more budget conscious. So uh, that's it. I think that's it. Uh, I enjoyed the EJC a lot and I hope everyone else enjoyed my vlogging. Um, along the way too. So uh, I'll see you next time I do something interesting. <laughs>